All right, welcome to another episode of the Clydesdale Rider. Today I have my Superfly back from the bike shop. I got my new chain put on, if you saw one of my other videos where I had uh, broke the chain while I was out riding. However, the front chain sprocket um, on the front derailleur is popping and skipping. So it's a little worn out, so I have a new replacement we're gonna put on today. Um, you'll have to excuse the mess here in the garage. It's been a little bit of a a crazy week trying to get everything cleaned up and ready to go. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that as of today, I jumped on the scale and I went up a few pounds. So I'm a little bit over 280, say 283, 284. So as some of you know, I'm trying to watch my weight and, and bike to, to get my weight down. So as of today, I'm on keto again. So you'll start seeing some keto recipes here down the road. So we'll see how that goes, you know, in the next couple of weeks. So last time I was on it worked really well. So, um, Pretty excited to, to be back on it. It definitely uh, is a diet that I enjoy being on. So between that and the biking, hopefully the weight will come off fast. But first, let's get the uh, Superfly back up to par. All right, today I have my sprocket ready to go. I do have a two by 10 set up on this bike. This one says that it is for an 11 speed. The bike shop told me that it's probably the same one. So hopefully it works out. Otherwise I have to return this and the only set that race face sells is the dual set. So it has the, the front chain ring and the smaller chain ring, the back one. So hopefully this works out for me today. Five millimeter Allen. This I had to buy. I did not have one. This is a crank puller pulling tool. I picked this up at my local bike shop. I think REI and some other places have them and my gloves as always. So hopefully this is all I need. We'll find out here in a few minutes. All right, I did have to grab another Allen wrench um, for this specific one. It's an 8mm just to get this cap off here. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. That one was a little tough to get off. That just pulls off. My local bike shop did tell me when I bought this tool that this part comes off and this part comes off and it's so that you can switch them to each side depending on which um, crank style you have and this will apparently work on both so I have it set up for this crank style here you insert your puller tool inside here like so I'll pull this out all the way so I can get it in there good Once that's in there, should be able to start cranking it down. Get some tension on there first. That should pull. That was really hard. There we go. And when I wasn't on camera, I did disconnect the chain. All right. Look at that, pops right off. When you buy your new um, chain ring, make sure you find out what size it is. This is a 104 by 36 um, teeth. So um, the 104 is the distance between this screw and this screw, okay? So again, I'm using 11 speed, so hopefully that works, but all you gotta do now is just put these guys in, pull it off, and if I remember correctly, you'll have the back part just fall right out, screw, and then there's a little, little cover here. So the way that this works is it goes in between the gear there, and then you just tighten that down on it. So I should have four of those, four sets when I'm done here. And then just pops right off. Pretty easy. All right, so looking at these teeth, you can see they're kind of rounded off. And I have a couple that are definitely different lengths than others. All right, so uh, kind of look for that, you know, when you're looking to see if you need to replace it. If you look at the new one, they've got nice flat edges. They're not rounded. Um, on the tip there compared to you know this one that you can probably see now 
so definitely time to replace it i have about 1300 miles on this guy so and these are aluminum so kind of expected maintenance so hopefully i get the same runtime out of this one here so now just gonna line this up and i'm guessing you can probably put it wherever you want it's not gonna matter and then you're gonna want to put one of your screws on the back end or these fasteners i should say and then the top fastener And then I'm just going to hand thread this in a little bit. I'm not going to torque them all down until I have them all in and seated. And I'll just do the same thing over here. That's what they look like on the back when you're putting them in. They just pop right in. <laughs> that now time to put it back on quick note there is a spacer washer right here that came off so make sure um, that doesn't fall off on you it just fell off on me and otherwise I probably wouldn't have noticed it I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and we'll put it back on assembly here and my little o-ring just put that right back on there I don't have any issues make sure you get your pedals lined up correctly because this will go on any which way so if I really wanted to I can uh, mess this up and have a tooth off or so or you know even do something like that which you probably don't want to do so make sure you're in the right spot might even have been better in hindsight to mark it now that I'm thinking about it that does look pretty good and I'm going to get my crank screw and I'm going to press that. Alright guys, now I have my torque wrench. So I'm going to torque down the outer bolts and the middle bolt. Make sure if you're doing this on your own, you look up your torque specifications. Alright, once everything's torqued down, go ahead and make sure everything works properly and it seems to be working pretty good so trailer's shifting and we're good to go for a ride now she's all done i just took her for a spin around the block and shifts smoothly the railer might need a little bit of an adjustment um, but all in all it works pretty good i will say make sure you look up your torque specifications um, when I was doing this project, I had to continuously look up what I was doing um, because I didn't know off the top of my head. Um, and luckily, I had a torque wrench that does inch pounds because most of these are the torque specifications are in inch pounds or newton meters. So, just kind of an example, I think my crank bolt was 400 inch pounds, uh, give or take. And I think the other ones were about eight. So, make sure you look those up. That's probably pretty important um, for when you're putting your bike back together. So, until next ride. We'll see you then.